It's time for the main event in this course, a set of mock interviews featuring real-world system design interview questions. These are questions I've asked as an interviewer, questions I've seen other interviewers ask, and questions I've been asked while interviewing at big tech companies myself. For each one, we'll show you the right questions to ask before you dive into a solution and give you a chance to sketch out your own system design. Then I'll bring in a couple of helpers to play the role of a successful interviewee and show you what a good interview for this question looks like. Finally, we'll debrief after each mock interview and talk about what made that interview successful and what you should learn from it. These are also opportunities to gain experience in how the various technologies we've discussed earlier in the course fit together. Practice makes perfect, and that applies to interviewing as well, so don't skip this section. It's the most important one. Are we talking about a search engine for the entire web, like Google, or just some intranet tool? We're talking Google. Billions and billions of web pages and billions and billions of people searching. Okay, we designed a web crawler earlier, so I assume we can have a distributed data store of page content already, right? Yes, we can start with a repository of web pages you designed earlier. All right. Well, I'm not going to recreate all of Google in 20 minutes, so can we just focus on the problem of generating reasonable search results at massive scale? Sure. Well, how would you define reasonable, though? Well, we need to take some measures to prevent people from gaming the system, at least. So a web page that consists of nothing but a keyword repeated over and over and over again shouldn't rank as number one for that keyword. So we should talk about other signals that might predict relevance, but I'm not going to try to recreate decades of work to combat people trying to play SEO tricks. To answer your question, though, a reasonable search result is a page that gives the searcher the information they were seeking. How do you measure that? Well, uh, short of explicit ratings that most people wouldn't bother to give, we could look at things like whether the user returned to the search results after viewing a page that was presented to them. That might mean that they didn't get what they were looking for the first time. If they don't click any search results at all, that might mean that they were particularly unhelpful. Uh, these sorts of implicit signals can be inaccurate, though. I mean, someone may have just gotten distracted and left for all we know. But over enough people, it should provide some data. Sure. Okay. Let's talk about some algorithms you might employ and an architecture to apply them at scale. So yeah, we've been asked to design Google here, basically. Um, tall order, you know, some very smart people at Stanford did this a long time ago. And uh, are you that smart? Let's find out. But you know, just break it down into components. What data would you want to extract, first of all, to measure how relevant a page is to keywords within it and doing that at massive scale, like we talked about earlier. Things like TFIDF don't really scale that well, so you might need to think about something more creative. What algorithms might you use to map keywords to pages and how to sort them and rank them at the end of the day? And what system architecture would allow you to do all this at a ludicrous scale? Um, this is a tough one, guys, so have a crack at it, but when you have a try in, on paper somewhere, come back and we'll go through the mock interview and see one way to successfully tackle this problem. Well, let me first start by thinking about a high-level algorithmic approach to how to identify documents relative to a keyword. The most basic search algorithm I know is TFIDF, where we take the frequency of a term within a document and divide it by the frequency of the term over all the documents to get a measure of how special that term is to that document. Can you think of any problems that might present in the context of searching the entire web? Yeah, at least two come to mind. Uh, one is that this is really easy to game. So just load up a page with the keyword you want and make sure it's a relatively obscure keyword and you win. So maybe this could be part of the solution, but certainly something more sophisticated is needed. The other problem is computing the denominator. Computing document frequency across the entire internet seems like an intractable problem, or at least one that would require so many resources that we should question if we really need it. Right. So, let's see what other ideas you can come up with. Well, let me work backwards from what we need to present to the user. So ultimately, we need some sort of inverted index that maps keywords to a list of relevant documents, sorted by some measure of relevance. So what might that measure be? Well, we've all heard of PageRank. It's how Google started. As I recall, that's based in part on backlinks. They were using links to a page and the anchor text of those links as measures of a site's popularity. Coming from academia, they just saw backlinks as the same things as citations for research papers, which is kind of how they measure success in the academic world. But I digress. Let me start just writing down things we might want to measure and bake into whatever generates that inverted index. So backlinks is one. What else can I think of? Um, obviously, the words actually on the page should count for something. 
but there may be other signals that give us hints on how much to weight those terms, like what position within the document it's in. If it's mentioned right at the beginning, then it's probably more relevant to the page. Uh, words that appear in bold or in a big font might also be important. The title of the page is a big signal too. Uh, words in the title should count for a lot. I suppose that's something that could be gamed, but uh, if the title is what's presented to user in the search results, it kind of has to be relevant to the page if the page owner expects to get relevant user traffic in return. Uh, the length of the document might also be a signal, or maybe more generally how often the term appears in the document. Hey, that's term frequency. Uh, maybe we can at least keep that part of it. The idea is to make sure that we don't rank pages that just have the keyword on it and nothing else. I think there are meta tags people can insert into their HTML to explicitly tell search engines what keywords they want to target, but that seems really prone to gaming, so I'm not sure we'd really want to use that in this day and age. Just thinking out loud, these all look like features that could ultimately be fed into a neural network that learns how to rank documents based on user interaction with search results. That might play a role later on in the design, but first let's worry about extracting and storing all of this data at scale. Okay, so we'll start with that repository of web pages that we came from our crawler. Presumably this is compressed somehow, so as not to take up ridiculous amounts of storage, or at least less ridiculous amounts of storage. Now we need to build up an index that maps keywords found in each page to the document it was found in, its position within the document, and whether it's a header or a title, and the other signals that we talked about a minute ago. Basically, this is a big key value object store, where the keys are keywords, or more compactly keyword IDs, so that can be distributed. I think that's kind of what Bigtable was made for at Google, but any modern NoSQL database should do. In the end, we want an inverted index that maps keywords to a ranked list of documents. So if we can keep that sorted by keyword as we go somehow, that will save us some trouble, but we could do it later if we had to. As for the indexer itself, I think that's why Google invented MapReduce in order to parallelize the processing of documents in the web repository. A more modern alternative today would be Apache Spark, uh, which is faster and gives us more flexibility and built-in tools. Okay, how do we go about extracting keywords from documents? Do we just build up a map of every word in the document and go from there? No, there would be a whole world of complexity in normalizing those keywords that I skipped over. We need to deal with capitalization, punctuation, spacing, synonyms, and stop lists. That's probably just a start. We could also build up n-grams of words that represent phrases, potentially. There's a whole world of search algorithms out there that, frankly, I'm only vaguely aware of, but at least I know these problems exist and need to be addressed. I think generally these challenges are addressed in the process of building up a forward index that maps documents to keywords as an intermediate step, but I'm lumping all that into this more general indexer box that I drew here. Okay, so a more traditional approach would be to split that up into a forward index, and I guess that's what you're describing as the beginnings of an inverted index. But I get that you're just thinking out loud here for now. So keep going. All right, so the other thing we need to think about is page rank, assuming that's still a thing. So we need to extract any links to other pages and store those somewhere. So we can later build up a mapping of pages and how many backlinks they have across the entire web. Those links need to match up with the URLs we originally crawled, so the same logic we used to normalize URLs in the crawler would need to be applied here as backlinks are extracted. I don't remember all the details of PageRank, but I think it weighs each link by how many other links appear on the page that it came from. That provides some defense against link farms and stuff like that. Now we said the anchor text of those backlinks mattered as well. We could treat those as just another entry in the index, where the anchor text is the keyword and the page it links to in the document. But ultimately, we need a database of links between two documents, so whatever computes page rank can add up all the links to a given document and later use that as a signal to our search algorithm. All right, I ran out of space on the whiteboard, so let me move over here. At this point, the two main pieces we have is a big index that maps keywords to documents and various signals of that keyword's relevance to the document. We also have something computing page rank, given a database of all the links between documents on the web. So now we just need to tie it all together. That index contains a bunch of rows for each keyword mapping them to documents and how they were formatted and positioned within the document and stuff. So something will need to score all of those relevant signals within the document into some sort of score that we can later use for ranking. If the forward index isn't already sorted by keyword, we'll probably want to do that now so we can more quickly figure out how to rank each document the keyword appeared in. Actually, if we're using Spark, it might figure out how to optimize that on its own without us having to explicitly sort things. 
So finally, we'll have some sort of ranking stage that takes each keyword, the measure of that keyword's relevance within each document, and the document's page rank score to come up with a final ranking of the documents for a given keyword. You can imagine even more features being fed into the ranking that I haven't imagined yet. I think this is where the term learning to rank came from, so potentially deep learning could be employed to learn the best way to combine page rank and features from the documents themselves and whatever else we dream up to produce the best rankings. And although I'm drawing scoring, sorting, and ranking all within the same box, they could be split out into their own stages if it made sense to scale them independently, which it probably does. Finally, we have what's needed to write out our inverted index. Our front-end web servers can query that inverted index to provide search results to our happy searchers who found what they are looking for. All right. Well, this is workable and not too far off from how Google was originally designed, in fact. They had more complexity on how to keep the forward index sorted, but as you pointed out, Spark and other modern tools and databases would manage a lot of that for us today. You were right to focus on the high-level architecture first because that's the hard part. In the minute we have left, though, talk more about how you'd scale all of this to billions and billions of pages and users. Well, I talked a little bit about using distributed storage and analytics. Originally at Google, that would have been Bigtable and MapReduce. Today, the web repository might be a data lake built on cloud storage. And pretty much everything in a rectangle here would be implemented in Spark or something similar, which can scale across a cluster as needed. The other databases would be a NoSQL data store of some sort that can also be scaled horizontally. It's possible that some of the operations we're doing could be consolidated to operate on fewer databases that I'm showing here conceptually. Maybe there is no intermediate backlinks data store at all, and the normalizer just takes data streaming from the indexer directly. Now, given the massive volume of search traffic, we'd have many front-end servers distributed across different racks, data centers, and regions, using DNS tricks to geo-route users to the closest data center, and load balancers to distribute the load amongst the servers in each data center. The inverted index would be cached in Redis or something, so those servers would have fast access to them locally. Okay, good. There's a lot more we could talk about in terms of operations and keeping this thing working reliably, but we have to move on. All right, let's debrief on what was probably the hardest interview of this entire course so far. This is a very complicated problem, and again, uh, if you're not already familiar with how Google was originally designed, we're basically asking you to be as smart as Larry Page and Sergey Brin when they were at Stanford. Okay, tall order. Uh, but, you know, just seeing how you approach the problem and uh, your perseverance, again, is really what the interviewer is looking for here. Now, although we didn't work backward, strictly speaking, uh, we did start with the knowledge that we wanted an inverted index at the end. So we knew what our end result had to be, and we kind of worked toward that end result that we had in mind. Uh, so just getting, you know, from the crawl to that inverted index, that was our focus throughout our design process and how we thought about it. Now, given the complexity of the system, uh, we really had to focus on just high-level components. We did not have time to go into detail on how any specific subcomponent worked. And uh, fortunately, we already had the design of a web crawler in our back pocket already done. In this sort of a problem, honesty really is critical. It's okay to say that you don't know the details about how Google or PageRank actually works. Uh, but you should acknowledge that and at least, you know, talk about the problems that you're leaving unsolved and how you might go about solving them. You know, what should page rank try to be accomplishing? What, what's it, what's its goal? At least if you can't talk about how it works exactly. Now, again, this is not the only solution. It's not even the best solution. Uh, you're not going to come up with what Google has done over the past 20 years or whatever on your own in 20 minutes. Again, what's important here is just how you reacted to the questions and feedback from the interviewer. And thinking out loud along the way, you know, to show that you can actually don't freeze up on a problem this complex. So you can actually break it down into components that you can tackle. It's also important to listen to hints from the interviewer. We did that in this interview. Uh, we quickly abandoned TFIDF, for example, because we were being subtly steered away from it from the interviewer. So listen and pick up on those hints if they're giving them to you. All right, that's about as tough as a problem as you're going to get, guys. So congratulations for getting it this far. And uh, that wraps up our mock interviews for this uh, course. Obviously, there's many more out there that we could do, but I think that's enough to get you started and wrap your head around. And next, let's talk about some general interview tips to help you get through the larger interview successfully.